Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back with another episode, another rider. Today we have a interesting man and he's been coaching people throughout a period of time, which I'm sure he'll enlighten us about. And he's just gonna just talk and tell us what it's all about, how he coaches people and the tricks of the trade. So nice to have you here today, coach. That's all right, thank you for having me. Okay, first of all, you're known as coach. What is it that you do? Uh, I'm an artist manager, a creative director. A creative director. Yeah. And what's a typical day like for you? Meetings, phone calls, negotiations, studio. Just, yeah, working. Is it any particular genre of music? No, I don't stick to one genre. Good music is good music and good talent is good talent. I don't okay. think on it. Can you share with us any artists that you've been working with? I can, but I like to keep myself incognito. <laughs> okay, okay. But you would know some of them. Like, I, know, I work with T. Muller. I'm not sure if it depends on the demographic of your podcast, but I work with T. Muller. I work with a new artist called Lewis Fitzgerald, who's been signed to Relentless Records. And I work with a few TikTokers as well. But yeah. Okay, that's in. good. What have you learned about this industry that you wish you knew when you had started? That not everyone's your friend and a lot of this is just strictly business so you just got to treat it as a business as it was as if it was any other job and yeah just take everything with a pinch of salt okay and what would you change if you could start again nothing really just add those two things that i've learned along the way for and just have it in my head from the beginning mm -hmm. so in the case of that where you say not everybody's your friend and you're negotiating how would the skills that you use be different? Say that again, sir? In the case of the fact that when you're negotiating, yeah, yeah, for better artists or however you do it, yeah. how would you have changed, how you implemented that? What would be different? I'll just know how to move with the negotiations and know how and understand how the people at the top work and understand their brains and try to pick their brains before they can think they can pick mine. And another thing as well that I've learned is that a lot of the older heads in the industry take advantage of the younger heads in the industry or feel like they don't know what they're doing or because of their age. But a lot of the younger guys are actually doing a lot better than the older guys right now. So it's, but yeah, you just got to have, just know what you're doing and believe in yourself. Otherwise no one else is going to believe in you. Is that because music's a young person's game, really? Not really, I just feel like the game's changed from how it was 20 years ago to how it is now, do you know what I mean, so... Okay, and how has it changed? Because um, you look quite young. Yeah, I feel like, first of all, it's changed in terms of the way people listen to music, like, no one really goes out to buy CDs no more, or, how do you say it, like, there wasn't streaming services as, like, such as Spotify and Apple Music and all those other things in those days but now there is and there's different ways for people to chart different ways for people to blow up and whatnot back in the day it was just like hardcore cells and physical cells and whatnot it's not like that normal so when you take your coach your name's coach yeah. when you're mentoring these up-and-coming artists what's the kind of speech that you give them at the start i don't really give them a speech i just I, I just know if you're serious or not i don't really like working with people that are just in it for the money or like that because the main thing for me is the passion. If you've got passion and I believe in your talent, then we can work. I don't really, um, that, pe people just show me from the beginning how they are and what, they, what they're about before me even having to, do you know what I mean? Get into conversation with you or give you a speech or whatever, do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I just work with people that are on the same wavelength as me. So a speech isn't needed. So what are the key things that you're actually looking for when you're talking to someone who said, I want to be a, you know, I want to be a star. I want to, you just got to be different. That's the main thing. I feel like people look at something and feel, okay, I'm just going to do exactly this and then I can get exactly where they are. It doesn't work like that. I feel you've just got to find your niche, find what your unique selling point is and just run with it. And just believe in yourself. Because like I said earlier, if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. If I believe you or like if I believe in your talent, I can't believe in it more than you do. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm not the one that's in the studio that's going to be writing the songs or rare, rare, you know what I mean? So I feel like you just need to believe in yourself 100% before anyone else can believe in you. That's good. What does the future hold for you? Go wait and see. If you search my name in five years and you'll see where I am. 
How long have you been in this business? And where do you want it to go for you? I've been in it professionally for about five, six years now, but I started, when did I start? I can't remember when I started properly, but yeah, for the past five, six years, I've been in and around the industry. So how old were you when you started? Do you remember that? I started off playing drums, but I've, I've been doing that from like, from young. So that, that started when I was about six. Then I went to a music college after secondary school. And that's where I started taking like the management and business side of things more seriously. So I'll say about 16, 17. Okay. Okay. So you're in your mid twenties now then? Yeah. It must be. What would be your advice to the younger people who are coming up behind you? Depending where you're coming from, focus on what's important. Um, don't be drawn into the hype of everything that's around you. Just focus on like the things that are going to matter in the years to come. Do you know what I mean? Everything, like, there's so much going on in the world right now and in London and in what we call the hood and whatnot. But, like, just try and keep your mind away from all of that. Try and keep yourself away from all the nonsense and the mix-up and... Um, yeah, just go for whatever you want to go for. If, even if it, I'm not even talking about music specifically, I'm just talking about in anything. Like, if you know you're good at football, like, just take that seriously. If you know you want to do accounting, just take that. Like, just whatever you want to get yourself into and you see yourself doing, just go for it wholeheartedly and don't get drawn up into the mix of everything else that's going on around the world. You speak of mix up, and obviously we spoke about the progression and what's changed. Yeah. Has it got worse? Has it got better over the years? And how do you handle it? For me, I've been away from the area for a while, so I'm good, I'm Gucci. I, like, I don't really focus on what's going on in the area or I'm not really in touch with what's going on in the area. So I can't really answer that question. I'm just, I just focus on myself and what's important. Mm -hmm. But the artists that you come across, yeah. that you're mentoring or coaching, they don't, are they, been repetitively kind of getting themselves in issues or are uh, they no 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 not at all all my clients are just focused on what on their crafts and elevate and we don't we're not really nothing else really phases us do you know what i mean mm. and what are the what you know we hear about like i say in the rap industry where you have conflictions between different groups of people and things like that would you say we have that over here in the british industry yeah, it definitely happens, and you can see it. Like the, the rappers don't hide it. Do you know what I mean? It's, there's rap battles going on, and we, 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 but again, nothing, none of that concerns me. None of my people are in any rap battles or none of that nonsense. So, okay. you get me. So you're strictly business. It's strictly business as it should be. Uh, that's good. That's good. You've been an interesting guy. Thank you very to much. Talk to. I would say if anybody wants to find you, where can they find you? But you seem to be... I'm incognito. We do. <laughs> if you can find me, you can find me. Good, well done. But uh, yeah, I don't promote myself like that. This is the first time I've even done this kind of thing. I don't really do this. Really? Yeah. Okay. And why is that? Why is what? Why would you not normally do... I'm anything? just a private person. Just, it, oh, just in, a private person. Yeah, yeah. Not about business circumstances. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, my last question to you yeah. is... The world's in front of you. Yeah. Seven point five billion people. Yeah. No pressure. And I've just got a last. I've just got a call in one second. But yeah. Go okay. On. What would be your words of wisdom to the world if they're looking for something of wisdom from you? Just follow your dreams. I know it sounds cliche, but it's just literally just if if you've seen someone else that has done it and they're not too different from you, it just shows you can do it. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for that, Thank and we you. wish you well. Thank you. Cheers. We hope that episode enhanced your life. We post an interview every day as well as vlogging on our social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to get our latest episode.